Okay, excellent. I've got 30 minutes, actually 29 minutes now, to show you guys how to track customer loyalty. And also we'll go over a little bit more about what actually loyalty is, what it looks like, why it's important. And I'll give you the Zoho use case, how we manage and how we monitor and measure our own customer loyalty. And we'll also go into a little bit about the difference between customer satisfaction and customer loyalty because they are definitely two very different animals. So I just kind of want to give you guys an idea of what customer loyalty looks like. Pretty simple, straightforward definitions here. For loyal customers, they'll recommend you. They'll buy from you again. They'll keep buying from you. The ones that are detractors, the ones that aren't very loyal at all, in fact, are upset, perhaps, or not satisfied at all, they'll buy less. That last one is extremely important. We don't want that to have happen. They'll tell others not to buy from you. That's a business killer. And then you have the guys in the middle, which by no means do we need to avoid these, uh, no, by no means do we not need to focus on these folks, but they'll continue to buy from you. So perhaps while you're working on the top level or the bottom level, these guys will stay neutral and you'll be able to kind of buy yourself some time so you can get these detractors up and then uh, ultimately move them all to the blue, blue uh, line and get them to loyal. There's different levels of loyalty as well. And this graphic we built to kind of give you an idea of where the loyalty starts. So that top uh, blue arrow that we were talking about, loyal, loyal customers, you know, they're satisfied. And then they become repeat customers. And then they're that category of loyalty that kind of spread the word. Hey, Zoho's great. Widgets, ABC Widgets is great. We love them. And then you have the guys that most often are sitting on the front rows, right, at your events. And the ones that buy uh, fingernail, I don't know how, I'm not interested, I don't do fingernail stuff, but there's Zoho fingernails now that you can buy apparently. And belt buckles, a couple of our uh, loyal customers and partners are, are wearing our brand now. That's, that's the evangelist level that we're hoping everyone gets their customers to. So we talked about, you know, the levels of loyalty, but why do we need them? Well, it's pretty self-explanatory. But there's actually some science behind it. There's some data behind it. I'll let you guys kind of soak this in. It makes common sense, but look at the disparity between the two. 60 to 70% is a lot different than 5 to 20. And this is the difference between being successful and struggling, right? So this is the, this is the, why, the, the reason why loyalty is important. Because it's a lot easier to sell to people that are existing customers and that people are loyal. It's also a really, really good quote in the customer loyalty space. It takes months to find one, but seconds to lose one. You're only as good as your last interaction with that customer. At Zoho, we pride ourselves on having no annual contracts. You can, you can go for an annual contract if you want, but if you want to just use our product for as long as you need to and you want to leave, you have that freedom, you have that choice, you have that flexibility. Not a lot of vendors do that because they want to be able to lock you in and have you for at least a year. Vendors, they want to have you in just long enough to, to hopefully acquire the next customer to replace you. We have to be just as good as our last interaction, and that, that's, a, that's a takeaway that you guys could apply to your own business, hopefully. The other key point to remember about loyalty is a two-way street, right? Our customers need to be loyal to us and our brand and our products, but just at the same token, we need to be loyal to them. Ultimately, we're, we're building products to service their needs, to solve their problems. So we have to remain loyal to the people that are helping us build our business. And because of that, the customer is king, right? Anybody ever heard the customer is king, right? Pretty much everybody. That's, that's what you build your business around, the fact that the customer is king. But again, the two-way street is that we're their loyal subjects. Because I'm willing to not go to someone else. I'm not going to another brand. I'm going to stick with my brand and I'll do it at all costs. And that's what we're all looking for. So kind of segueing into how do we measure it, right? Well, there's some pretty obvious ways to measure customer loyalty. And we're all doing those today, hopefully at, at some level. 
You have the surveys, you have the opinion polls that may exist in your social media. You have informal feedback, which almost is always either in person or, again, on social media. And then you can do some back-end stuff, right? Some stuff that you can do on your end to look at purchase analysis uh, patterns and kind of understand from that side, you know, what, what uh, products and services in your customer, your loyal customers. So one popular method we're going to discuss here, and it's the reason why we're talking about the integration between uh, Zoho CRM campaigns and Zoho Survey, is we really enjoy net promoter score surveys here. On a zero to 10 scale, how likely is it you would recommend us, our product, our service, our brand, to one of your coworkers, family, friends? It's a real simple idea. It's a real simple concept. You use one question to get a, uh, you get a good number of data on how loyal your customers are just by this one question. And this little handy graphic here shows you the score from zero to 10 and what category they fall in. So zero to six are our detractors. There was a, from the first slide there. Not all of them will go and, and bash you publicly, but maybe the zero and ones will. And maybe those two, three, or four guys won't buy from you again. Something along those lines, but those are definitely detractors. And you have the, the neutral category we talked about, the passives in seven and eight. And then just a very, very small window, nine and tens. If you think about it, how often do you give something a nine or a 10? In gymnastics, in diving, in Olympics, there's not very many nine and 10 scores, right? They're in the middle. Nine and 10 is hard to achieve, but it's what we're striving for. Those are your promoters. Those are your evangelists. Those are your word of mouth guys. And essentially to, to perform the net, perfor to, to get your net promoter score, you take the percentage of promoters and you take the percentage of detractors, you minus the promoters from the detractors. Real simple. And so how does Zoho run a survey? Well, like I said, we usually like to do NPS surveys, but we do it with our own apps. We're lucky enough to have built a great ecosystem, a great integration between these uh, three apps that allows us to kind of keep it all in house and it's very seamless and easy to do. We can pull lists from Zoho CRM, throw them into campaigns. We can pull surveys in from, from Zoho Survey and pull them into Zoho campaigns. Send it all off, track, measure, look in the CRM record six months down the line and find out, oh, by the way, that, that guy filled out that survey and he gave us a, a, a seven. We can go back and check to see if we've made any headway on our next survey. So I just want to show you, that's, that's kind of the email way to do a survey. And I want to show you a couple of different ways real quick, just some other ways that you see from Zoho, how we uh, implement surveys. We'll do it in the product banner. I guess we use the product banner a lot to do some announcements, but we also do our surveys there. So that's an opportunity there for you to uh, find a new way to get to survey respondents. Not everybody responds to email. Not everybody has the time, but if you leave it in a product, it's a possibility that they can fill it out. Same thing with logouts. You might see this when you log out of Zoho Systems. You might see a survey. You might see an announcement. It's another good way to get this survey in front of your customer. But as I mentioned, we're going to talk about the email side of things, the Zoho Campaigns way to do it. And I'd like to bring up Sharanya to help us go through this. So we'll start in Zoho CRM. Okay. So Zoho CRM, this is, uh, I've already kind of pre-built it just to save a little bit of time here. But I've pre-built a lead uh, view of all the attendees here at Zoholics. Quite a few more, but for sake of this purpose, we've got these uh, seven people that showed up to my event. Okay. Now, I want to load those guys into Zoho campaigns. campaigns. Yes. So we sync them. So we're syncing the leads from Zoho CRM with Zoho campaigns. So we're selecting the leads module. We're building, I built a custom view. Again, the custom view I called Zoholics. Yeah, let's call them customer oh, loyalty. Oh, sorry, we called them customer loyalty. Yeah, and I moved them to a mailing list here. So now the sync is happening. We're gonna do a daily sync. And again, you can change all these functions here. There you go. Okay, so these contacts would have come into your mailing list. Just wait for it to come in. That'll take a little while. But before that, uh, let me go to Zoho Survey and uh, 
show the quick survey that we have created. So, let's so we're looking for review. awesomes. So we go back to Zoho campaigns now, and uh, we go and create the survey campaign from here. Since survey and uh, Zoho campaigns are already connected, you can see this under the advanced campaigns inside Zoho campaigns. And if you click the Zoho survey campaign, now both my accounts are already connected, survey and Zoho campaigns. So. Yeah, so since those two are connected, we can just so, find and drop down our survey here. Right. And what, do you, what subject do you want, Miss? Let's say, uh, please fill out this survey regarding customer loyalty. It's a long one. Yeah, it's probably not the best subject, right? <laughs> but. It's a very long, not a good practice. Let's keep no, it. No, 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 no. But I'm, I show the bad examples. You show the good ones. All right. So we, we, have, the, uh, we have a preloaded survey template uh, from Zoho Campaigns that you can quickly uh, customize. So, you know, please fill this survey. And let's leave out the rest for now. So you can edit your content. You can edit your... Uh, you know, the way you want to. The best part here is the call to action in this survey template has already linked, the, linked it to the survey that we selected uh, earlier. So, so anytime a recipient clicks this call to action here or this link here that says give feedback, it will directly take them to this particular survey that you see. So let's look at that. And that talks about the contextual integrations that we were talking about during the keynote. It's not just a sync of data. It's actually kind of ready-made it for you so that you're doing less clicks and you're doing less work. If you see here, my sync is already done. And uh, I, have, I have my list of people who have come in from the CRM system. And I proceed. And we are ready to send this out. Of course, this goes through a review process, but for now we just uh, stopped that uh, process so that we can quickly wrap this up. I think yeah, they good. trust me enough that they yeah. went ahead and said, you know, you have carte blanche to send what you want. But we do have a review team in Zoho campaigns that review every single campaign that's sent just to make sure that we're uh, uh, not spamming our customers or you're not spamming your customers. All right. So we have the survey sent out and now we are waiting for the results. So the survey has been sent out. The lead list has been pulled from CRM. The survey has been loaded from Zoho Survey. They've all been kind of put together in Zoho campaigns. We've sent it out. Now, let's see if we have anybody that's actually looked at our campaign. Let's see if they have received it yet. In progress. Let's just give it some time. Okay, I'll give it some time. Yeah, sure. Still in progress. But, but what we are looking at is uh, the list, this particular campaign under the campaigns module in CRM. And there you see it. A lot of times we take ourselves a little bit more serious than our customer takes ourselves. But what you can always tell from, again, minus the 0 to 10 score, those that fill out the survey quickly, I mean, maybe they, maybe they just caught them at the right time and they're not busy. But a lot of times those are usually our, our highest number of... Uh, of evangelists, right? The guys nice. that are really interested. Oh, that looks good for you. We've got a couple, yeah. Yes. All right. So uh, before time. I move to CRM, I'd like to show you the survey reports. That's what you wanted to show them. Mason? Yes, please. Yes. So this is in campaigns. So you can see that. Yep. So even down below, you can see the number of people that have uh, completed. The ones that have not started, we yes. can look at as well. These three have not yet. So you have an opportunity to look at kind of, like I said, that kind of instant gratification of sending out that, that uh, campaign and that survey. All right, so this is in campaigns. Let's show them in survey real quick, the results. Okay, you guys may have seen this as well on the survey side. So okay. kind of pick your poison on what you want to do. If you want to see your results in survey, you want to see your results in campaigns, you can do it in both tools because they're integrated. 
This is a little bit different uh, interface that you can see. The number of uh, responses completed, the number of survey visits. You can actually get your information there. But let's now see it in the CRM, right? And this is applicable. Okay, so the marketing guy, marketing gal, put together the campaigns, put together the survey, sent it out. He or she pats themselves on the back. I did a great job. I built a great campaign. I had a lot of people respond. I made a great survey. Sales guy has no idea that that's going on, right? Sales guy is calling leads, calling leads, calling leads, calling leads. Wouldn't it be nice if that sales guy knows whether or not he's calling a happy customer or a not happy customer? Right? That's why we have it in CRM. So now the sales guy can go through and say, I'm going to call this particular customer. I'm going to email this particular customer. Maybe before I do that, let me check to see how well they've uh, interacted with us and what kind of information they put in a survey. So this is, the, this is one of them. And uh, if you scroll down, there you go. So in the CRM, I can quickly review exactly what that person has thought about us. I can look at the individual report, and if the survey is a little bit longer than one question, you get that full view at that timestamp of today. Again, this is perfect for six months later to ensure that this customer that you're calling is still a, a, a satisfied customer, or still someone that's very loyal to us. We can see that right here within CRM. So now we talk about that disconnect. Gopal talked about that disconnect between the sales and marketing teams. This tool closes that gap. This integration, excuse me, closes that gap. Let's say, for instance, that we have a list of 100 people that we send the survey out to. And the uh, folks that give us the highest scores, we want to separate out. We want to segment out those folks. We want to send them a different message than what we send our detractors. So we, full, we find the information in survey. We parse the list. We then can go build custom views or custom mailing lists, whether you want to do it in CRM or whether you want to do it in campaigns. And then you can build campaigns around these separate, uh, these separate lists. That's kind of the power of this integration and ability to, uh, it's not as seamless, this, this part that we're talking about is not as seamless as actually sending off the survey, but it could be a future enhancement that we'll, we'll build into this integration. It makes a lot of sense, right? The message I'm going to send to my loyal customers is going to be different than those ones that perhaps aren't as loyal. So we'll get smarter about this, and that's actually a good, a good thing. We need your use cases, right? As you begin to use these three tools in unison, we want to be able to understand where it makes sense to add additional contextual integrations.